Hello and welcome to this video on Shoot 'em Up 2. Now watching this video assumes that you've seen the video on Shoot 'em Up 1. Uh, if you haven't, I suggest that you go back and look at it. It's the lesson just before this one. Otherwise, what I have to say here may make too much sense. What I have to say here may not make too much sense anyway, but that's okay. Just bear with me. Here's what I have here now is I have this bomb moving across the top. And you might say, is that a graphic? And the answer is no. That's not a graphic. What it is, is a font. And it's a font from Webdings. And it represents a capital letter M. So I'm moving a font across here. And of course, if you can use Webdings and stuff like that, you can get some cool things that look like graphics. Now, I can still move my platform. And the whole idea of my platform is, is that I'm trying to get it so I can I can blast this guy out. Let's see if I can do it. Here we go. Boom. Oh, missed him. Darn it, darn it. There was a little bit of a stop there. Come on. Boing. Let's go. Get him. Whoops. Nope, not quite. Come on. I can get him. There we go. Boing. And I got him. And there it is. It goes explode. So he exploded. Well, admittedly, this isn't the coolest thing to do. But nevertheless, it does show, it does show that that it works. And when I put OK, it starts over again, and I can go ahead and play it. OK, so let's see how I did this. Well, here's some, some important uh, stuff to pay attention to, because I, I had to make some, uh, some changes here. And I'm going to try and see if I can find my, uh, my board here. Yeah, there it is. OK. I had to make some changes to my, uh, my script from the previous lesson. So what I want to do is I want to show you the changes that I had to make here so that uh, and then I'll try and explain why why I had to make those changes. Let me get this guy out of the way. Uh, yeah, there it is right there. There's my script. What I had to do is, is, if you recall, on the move right and the move left on this function here, OK, and on this function here, the very line was is that I cleared the canvas. And I did that in the in the old one. I did that by resetting the canvas width to itself. I can't do that. I found I couldn't do that because if I clear the canvas, I clear the bomb out too. And then I got to paint the bomb back in, and then paint the uh, paint the uh, the uh, platform back in. And it was more more work than what it was worth. So what I did is I used the old trick of simply painting the plat the platform in black, and then uh, and then and then making that happen. And then putting x plus plus. This is the the value that the platform is from the left side of the screen, and so that means the next time I use x, it'll be one more greater. So now I'm going to fill it with tan, and then go ahead and paint it, and it'll give the illusion that it's moving uh, to the to the right. And x2 is going to be the x value, if you recall, of where the bullet is, and the bullet just follows the platform, even though you don't see it yet. And then if the platform, as long as the platform is less than 350, I'm going to do recursiveness here. If the platform is greater than 350, uh, I'm going to stop it so it doesn't move off the canvas. And I did the same thing with the move, move left. I used the trick here of uh, uh, repainting the platform. I did it in black. And now what I'm doing is I'm using an X minus minus where I'm decrementing rather than incrementing. And I do the same thing again. I let um, x2 equal to x plus 23, just like it did up here. x2 is equal to x plus 23. x is where the platform is. x2 is where the bullet is. And the plus 23 is added there so that the bullet is always in the center of the platform. Okay. Now, the other thing that I changed is I changed which key. I simply took out the key that stops the platform. The platform, you're always going to be moving it either to the left or to the right unless it bumps into the edge of the canvas. And I did that because I was having problems with the timers. The, 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 the issue that I have here is that I'm using the same timer for the bullet as I am for the platform. My suggestion is that if you're going to make a serious uh, shoot 'em up out of this, use a different timer for the bullet. That way you have more control over it. OK, so that's the changes I made on the JavaScript, which is this right here, just so you're aware of that. You may want to go back and, and maybe uh, play some of this video over again just to see the changes. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me, I, I just thought about this. Let me, let me carefully scroll and show what I have here. That's what I have. OK, and I'll just carefully scroll down here. 
because I hate these training videos where they go so fast and it's like what did he do what did he say so uh, hopefully you can capture you can see everything that's that's on this one here all right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the code for my platform HTML all right what I've done here is that this is the one if you recall that calls that external script that is this guy right here okay that we were just looking at this calls it this is my HTML document uh, that's uh, this guy right uh, where, where did he go uh, just a minute I'll get him out I got all these windows stacked on top of each other and uh, oops that's not it he's here somewhere that's okay we'll find him all right so anyway that's the one that that calls it and this right here this is my new script that I added in order to make the bomb go across so let's see let's see how I how I did the bomb I'm going to come down here and this is the new stuff that I added I added this right here I added the uh, my text my stuff get content 2d so so what I did is I added another object and that's going to be the bomb so I came down here my text fill style is red and then my text font is bold 40 pixels and it's the wingdings font and then my text fill text is with the capital letter M that's because the capital letter M and wingdings comes out to be the bomb and and that's the X uh, the X position and the Y position so it starts way over to right <clears throat> now I did make this red against a black background and for those of you in the know that that uh, people that are color uh, challenge uh, uh, you don't want to use red with black because for many that have uh, color uh, disabilities uh, in seeing color red and black look the same so you may want I made this red just for being dramatic you may want to consider making this white or some other contrasting color okay if I come up here now oh I'm sorry I have to look at the body here's what I've done here if you remember we had body on key down which key event okay so that told me which key was being pressed I had with a comma I added an on load on on load move target because as you recall when you see this dude as soon as you load it I'm refreshing the target starts moving so what I did here is that I said uh, when when this body element loads in call the function move target and that function move target is the one I was working on that's this dude right up here okay now what I did with the target is that I declared a new timer timer 2 text X is the X coordinate of the bomb of the target okay it starts out at 340 because it starts way over to the right so what I did in order to uh, make it you know look like it's moving I use I painted it black and then redid it and then decremented text X okay then I filled it with red repainted it and then I simply said that if text X is greater than or equal to minus 45 or you might say wait a minute why minus 45 well I had to wait till it got off the canvas see I waited until it actually gets off the canvas because before I restarted it if, if I waited till it's right here and then restart it looked a little bit funny uh, at least it did to me so you can change that if you want all right so if if um, if at the if the X value is greater than or equal to minus 45 you're going to keep recursively calling this so it'll keep decrementing decrementing repainting and then move to move to the left now if if it's already way over to the left that's the else then I'm going to set its X value to 340 that is bump it way over to the right and then set time out to move target again which will now call recursively call this again and then once it does it's going to be greater than uh, or equal to minus 45 so if you notice once it gets here then the value is reset and then it's, it, it, it does this recursive thing again now here's how I know when I hit it okay if x2 okay this quantity here and this quantity here and this quantity here if all these are true then what I want you to do is I want you to do the stuff here now what has to be true three things this one 
inside parentheses, whoops, this one inside parentheses, whoops, and this one inside parentheses. And then all that is enclosed in parentheses because it, I want one thing to be true. So x2 is the coordinate of the bullet. Text x is the coordinate of the target. So what I'm saying is that if the coordinate of the bullet is greater than or equal to the coordinate of the target minus 20 and x2 is less than or equal to the coordinate of the target plus 20. In other words, I'm given a window of 40 pixels. And the y value, in other words, it's right up there where the target is. The y value is, is uh, of, of the bullet is less than or equal to 30. Then I hit it. Bang. And that's where it has the alert explode. Okay. And I, I just simply uh, paint this in black and move it to the right. Okay, so let me just uh, scroll down here and look at all this here. That's the shoot 'em up, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And that's the other stuff here. So one of the things that I hope I illustrated here is that in order to do more complex coding, that's where I want to put the script in another document, the, the script that I've already created. I know that's right, but as you see, I had to go back and make some changes. And then the new script that I'm developing, developing, I can put that right in my HTML document. My suggestion is, is if you follow through on this, that you make a, a separate timer for each one of these. Make a, a timer for the platform as we have, make another timer for the bullet, and then make a, a, a third timer uh, for, the, for the target. Okay, uh, on our next one, we'll be touching on some object-oriented programming because, we, as you can see, we have three objects here, and we would obviously like to have more than one of these bombs or some other things here, and we'd also like to have them where they're shooting down at us, and if they hit us, then we go boom. All right, so that's it uh, for this video. Uh, thank you for watching.